This short video summarizes our results on ant navigation, especially on how ants get confused when nest queues are also root queues. Almost all animals, including humans, need to navigate. Imagine, for example, that you stay in the Hotel Ukraine in Moscow, and when leaving the hotel in the morning, you try to remember the shape of the building. However, in the evening, when you try to find your way back, you will realize that there are many buildings in Moscow that basically look the same. And this is due to Starling falling in love with this kind of architecture. So, remembering just the shape of the building is not very helpful. We asked ourselves whether similar problems appear in desert ants. So we went to Tunisia, to this small town called Mares, where we live, and from there every morning we drive into the salt pans where the small desert ant Cataglyphus fortis forages for dead arthropods. The ants conduct extremely long foraging runs in the salt pans of up to 1.5 kilometers, and afterwards they have to return to the rather inconspicuous nest entrance. Since about five decades now, scientists try to figure out how these ants navigate and which strategies they use to localize their nest. One main finding was that the ants can learn local cues like visual landmarks. They can, for example, easily learn that there is a black cylinder placed directly near the nest entrance, which is a blue spot in the center of the figure here. This is a very good visual cue. However, what happens now if the same cue does not appear at the nest only, but at many places in the environment of the ants, like it was seen for the similar buildings in Moscow before? Would the ants become confused by that? To test for that, we set up a very simple experiment. We placed two aluminum channels in the field. One of these channels was connected with the nest entrance. The nest was surrounded by a bucket so that the ants could not leave the nest, but only through a small tube they could enter the channel system. Within the channel, they had to turn to the right to reach a feeder. Like in the natural situation, the exit from the channel to the nest was an inconspicuous hole. Upon arriving at the feeder, the ants picked up a food crumb and carried it home to the nest. We next installed black cardboards at the nest entrance as well as in the test channel and let the ants travel for at least 15 times between nest and feeder. After that, we followed an individual ant on its way back to the nest, captured it three meters before it reached the nest position and released it in the test channel, where it conducted the rest of its homing run, before it started then the search for the nest entrance. This search was tracked by us by writing down the turning points of the end in the channel. That later gave us an idea about the search distribution of many ends around the queue. You see here the dashed line indicating the position of the queue in the test channel, while the yellow pattern gives the search distribution of 30 ants tested under this situation, showing that most of the ants focus their search directly at the black cardboard. We next repeated this experiment, but now installed the same cardboards several times along the way between nest and feeder. Would the ants become confused by this situation? Here you see how those cardboards appear to an homing ant. Adding those cardboards along the route changed the search distribution of the ants significantly. 
instead of focusing the full search basically at the cardboard as they did when the cardboard was present only at the nest entrance, shown in yellow here, the ants exhibited a rather wide search, shown in red. So obviously, the ant considers the validity of landmarks and focuses its search only at the nest mark when this nest mark appears not in the rest of the environment. We next tested whether the same strategy is followed by the ants when they are not trained to visual cues, but also olfactory cues, as it was shown that the ants can learn odors at the nest entrance. So we took an odor and pipetted it directly at the nest entrance in the channel and repeated their experiment. As you see here, again, when you place an odor at the nest entrance, the ants immediately learn the association of odor nest entrance and later focus their search at this odor. However, if you present this odor five times along the route in addition, the ants later rely less on this odor as a nest cue. Obviously, whether a nest cure is olfactory or visual, the ants take into account its reliability. Nest cues that appear at the nest only are reliable. However, when they appear in addition several times along the route, they become less reliable and the ants rather ignore them. Whether they do so based on higher cognitive abilities remains open. You might also wonder how we could visualize the landmarks in this video. This was based on the establishment of a new fancy video recording system.